So uh, if you caught yesterday's stream uh, or have seen any of the videos I put up uh, earlier today, if you're watching the day of the stream, uh, the date is here, here, here. Why is this so much harder than it needs to be? In this general vicinity, uh, that's when it's being recorded. So if you if you caught the stream on the previous day, uh, we talked about the Stonewall riots um, and why they were important. But um, I, I want to I want to make sure that we talk about the other activists and the other pieces of activism uh, that took place before the Stonewall riots uh, that also contributed to, um, you know, LGBT people getting their uh, human rights in a country that says they champion human rights, but have, you know, had horrific laws that have punished gay people for being gay people or black people for being black people or immigrants for being immigrant. Like America shouldn't say anything about human rights. Like when they do, it's just very clear that they're just ignoring the fuck out of their, their, um, their own human rights violations, like the history and the continuing history and the nonstop history of human rights violations from from america itself so um you know and i think i think part of the problem too is you know i've 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 been having conversations with friends and people that i've been been seeing the second a democrat comes into office for whatever reason uh, and i haven't been able to fully identify what piece of propaganda led to this but for whatever reason when a democrat is in office you know they seem to forget that america has had these egregious human rights violations uh, so it's important to point this stuff out, right? And it's important to to give credit where credit is due. It's, um, you know, Stonewall didn't happen overnight. It just, that wasn't just a, like, you know, it wasn't just a fuse that got lit the night that the cops raided the Stonewall in and were exceptionally brutal. No, there there was there was a laundry list of things that led to that. There was a, a laundry list of things that led to um, the LGBTQ people uh, in that part of New York that decided to resist back and push back against the cops. That just didn't happen, right? Like, George Floyd, yes, was the reason why last summer we saw such a great wave of protest, but that's not the only incident that led up to it. That What happened with George Floyd was a culmination of virtually every other incident of police brutality that we saw where everybody was like, okay, well, the criminal justice system is going to do its job. Oh, wait, no, they didn't. They fucking let these killer cops go. Oh, uh, maybe the next one, maybe, you, you know, and it became this thing of like, we're not seeing justice. So fuck it. We're going to go get our justice, right? That's kind of what Stonewall was. So let's look at a couple, couple of them uh, that, that I, uh, you know, I, I, I was able to find a, a great article that talked about a whole bunch of them. Uh, from popular resistance and the only thing i disagreed with the uh, uh, the article from popular resistance which is a great publication by the way a everybody should be subscribing to uh popular resistance and, and reading them uh the the late great kevin zeese was was a part of that organization margaret flowers is part of uh popular resistance as well um the only thing i i disagreed with the author was you know there 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 was a little bit of um they were throwing a little. They're, they're throwing a little little stank at at Stonewall, and, and I and I think, um, I think what we're about to talk about is important to to cover and and should be addressed. But I also don't want to downplay the importance of Stonewall, um, because that did lead to uh, more people being aware of. I'll get it, I'll get into a little bit, but Stonewall was unignorable because of what it was, um, and and we'll and in the context of of what we are going to talk about here in a second, it you know it kind of makes sense as to why that happened the way that happened. So uh, the first one was uh, in 1965, uh, the New York City Police Department, the NYPD, uh, raided a New Year's Eve ball in 1965. Now this was. This was huge because uh, after this raid, which was, again, particularly brutal and violent and was on New Year's Eve when, like, everybody's trying to have a good time, you know, it's like, OK, did did nobody from the NYPD get invited to a New Year's Eve party? Is that why you had to go crash uh, a bunch of gay people's fucking New Year's Eve party? Like, e eat a dick, you know, like, go fuck yourself. What do you 
maybe maybe change who you are. You, you think you think you didn't get invited to a fucking New Year's Eve party because you're a bummer at, at, at New Year's Eve parties like you like you're like the NYPD people are the ones that like, you know, bring their gun to a New Year's Eve party. And they're like, why did you why, why are you doing it? And it's like, you know, hey, let's not invite Jimmy this year because we're just tired of him intimidating people with this. like you don't have to be a cop all the time man like nobody needs that in there you know like maybe if you were less shitty of a person you would get invited to more parties do you ever think of that do you ever think of that nypd so they rate a uh, they rate a new year's eve ball in a in a you know pre predominantly uh gay club in 1965 the police commissioner got removed because of this um, and this garnered huge amount of heter heterosexual support. Heterosexual community was well behind the LGBTQ community. Um, and the rally that, you know, the, the groundswell that, that was built up was from a lot of LGBTQ activists in New York. Uh, and they, and they had some connection because they were in New York city, they had some connection to, to media. And that, and that's part of what plays into Stonewall as well is, is the fact that it was in New York city. Um, you know, and this got a lot of media coverage for a short amount of time. That's that's the key here. There wasn't, uh, you know, a, a long uh, list of uh, media that was covering this nonstop. Right. The, the, it was it was like, oh, my God, we're going to be talking about this all the time forever, forever. Oh, my God, this is crazy. Oh, my God. And then it's done. It's very similar to, um, you know, Israel, Palestine where in the middle of May, it was like nonstop coverage of what's going on. And now they've got a new prime minister and they're doing the same shit as they've been doing that they did back in May, that they did back in 2014, that they did at the, uh, at the March of return and where, you know, there's nobody talking about it because they did their piece for it. They got, they got their, they, they got their YouTube subscriptions, you know, CNN got its YouTube subscriptions. They got their fucking, um, you know, ratings and numbers. They made Mark Ruffalo apologize. That, that That's it. The media cycle stops. So now nobody is paying attention to the atrocities. Well, except for independent journalists that, that do, and, and, you know, Palestinian journalists that are covering this all the time. Uh, they're covering it. But in terms of like large scale media, I mean, local news is not going to cover this at all. But local news will cover something if it involves, I don't know, Russia. Oh boy, oh, Russia, Russia is coming. But no, an an apartheid state that's being partly funded by uh, the American military is not something that's going to get long term coverage. It's the same thing. They it it's like a flash in the pan. It's like holy shit, and we're done. That's what happened with the, with the 90, 1965 uh, New Year's Eve raid, um, because if because there was a groundswell of heterosexual support, and because of that, if if the coverage continued, then it legitimizes the LGBTQ movement. You already kind of gave them a little bit of lip service. You don't need to do any more. Is sort of how the media sees it. So they bailed on it. Uh, so why? Wasn't this kind of the spark that ignited everything? Well, because the the media killed the story as quickly as possible, especially when they and, and this is again another kind of similarity with with what's going on in uh, Palestine is when 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 the 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 public support starts shifting, right? Because I I believe at this point there was a shift in the perception in terms of support for the LGBTQ community. And when you have a story like this, where it's like, oh my God, these people are being brutalized for who they are. They, they're, and, the, and you know, like they're not being violent. They're, they're just going to a bar to have a good time. They're trying to have a fun way to kick off the new year. Like what the fuck, you know, that, that shifts this, that, that shifts the perspective of people and they go, well, maybe we've had this wrong. And the second that happens, the media has to kill the story. Because even if they cover it negatively, all they're going to do is kill their own ratings. And they don't want that either, right? Because it's a numbers game for the media. They don't actually care about being journalists. So it's the same thing with Palestine. The second the 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 perception was, was shifting, the Overton window was shifting, the media killed all the stories. That's it. No more coverage of what's going on there. You got your 15 minutes. We're done here.
and they moved on. So that's why this didn't become the spark, right? That's the that that's why we don't look at the the New York City uh, New Year's Eve raid and go, oh, that's what we connect with pride. Um, now moving on to 1966, uh, the Compton Cafeteria, which was a restaurant in in San Francisco, uh, was basically colluding with the cops to attack the gay community. And when uh, the gay community found out, it became a riot. Uh, again, very short, uh, quick burst kind of thing uh, where they like smashed a bunch of windows, set some shit on fire. And again, this is coming after decades and decades of violence towards their community. Uh, and, 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 you know, you find out that this restaurant that you probably went to and and like and have a connection to is selling out your people. Of course, you're going to be pissed. That's a betrayal. And yes, in those moments, my personal viewpoint is to take a moment to reflect on what happened and then make a decision because that anger uh, and that flash and that rage is a reaction. And when you make decisions out of reactions, they're usually not the best decisions that you could make. Do I think this was the right thing to do? No, but do I understand why people did it? Absolutely. I'm not going to fault them for doing it, but it sucks that that's what happened. And that's what what doubly sucks is the fact that it that it takes a, 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 an act of violence for people to realize that something is fucked up. You know what I mean? Um, so, so again, but there, you know, not a lot of media coverage, not a lot of, uh, organizing that happened around, uh, the, the Compton cafeteria if, uh, event. Uh, then you had black, the black cat bar again in, in, uh, New York city. They, they got raided and that led to a 400 person demonstration. They got evening news coverage. They were getting a lot of support from, uh, both Chicano and black activists uh, but there was no coordination. You know, it was just sort of a uh, uh, a a a hey, we we support this the LGBTQ community, and we think what the cops are doing to them is wrong because it's the same thing that they're doing to us, and that's a bunch of bullshit. You have our support, and that's it. And uh, that sucks because it it led to a four hundred person demonstration, and that's not. Uh, a number to you know fucking ignore it's still a good amount of people but again no coordination between the groups that's again, partly of why stonewall became what it was is because uh they coordinated and they organized uh all together Right. We're, we're, we're talking about the black activists, the Chicano activists, the LGBTQ activists, the, the feminist movement. They all got involved and stood behind this event, even though there was support for this. There was no there was no coordinated action. That's that's the missing element in this in this situation. Then you get to the patch raid. This was in Los Angeles, um, and that led to a 120 person march to the city hall. Again, those they're, they're, they looked at those numbers is laughable. I don't think that's I mean, a hundred gathering a fucking hundred and twenty people. Look, I have a hard time filling a fifty seat venue sometimes. To get a hundred and twenty people together to march down to City Hall to tell them that what happened at this nightclub was wrong is not is no laughing matter. Like that's that's a pretty impressive fucking thing. But they but they jerk. They, they kind of jerked it off. They kind of just swept it under the rug and meh, you know, they meh. So a year later, they did a one year anniversary thing. Uh, wasn't a parade or anything, just sort of a let's get together and, and memorialize what happened. Um, and the cops beat the shit out of somebody. They beat the shit out of a gay man, um, you know, which then just shut down that uh, it's unfortunate because what they want with that violence that state they, that state sponsored violence is demoralization that's what they want that's always what they want out of that um that's why they fucking called um the uh national guard on labor organizers in the 30s uh because they figured 
if they were violent towards them, um, they would just back down. Obviously, they didn't, uh, especially in the 30s. Uh, they did not. So uh, that was that became a failure. And and when when you don't back down from that violence, when people are like, all right, I guess I guess we're going to fucking fight now. Uh, that's when the state's like, ah, shit, more violence. Maybe what if we bomb them? Are we can we bomb our own citizens? Is that that's something a democracy does, right? Right, right. That's something. Yep. Where are we going? Yep. Uh, something else that started in 1965 and kept going for for quite some time was in Philadelphia. They used to do an annual reminder uh, where they would pick at Independence Hall and basically remind people that hey, LGBTQ people are still being persecuted against. That, um, you know, we're still here. We're still being raided. We're still being uh, attacked by uh, a political party. Um, and we're not going away. So, you know, you got to either accept us or get ready to fight us. Um, and, you know, that that kind of disappeared because of pride. Because Stone, Stonewall kind of took over the story. Um you know, so that that aspect of it is it, they, nobody's picketing Independence Hall anymore as an annual reminder of what's going on with the LGBTQ community. Uh, and that leads us to Stonewall. And we talked about what happened with with uh, with the Stonewall Inn and why that's a big deal. And the reason why that gets commemorated you know, and again, this is this is sort of the argument that the that the popular resistance article makes is the only reason why Stonewall is what it is is because somebody decided to commemorate it. It's the first, it's the first uh, LGBTQ pushback that got commemorated. That's it. Somebody made a holiday out of it, um, and I don't disagree with that. But I'm I'm not going to take the importance away from Stonewall itself because I to to me, yeah, that's that's really what it was. But it it, it is as important as everything that led up to it. Now, the reason why Stonewall became as big as it was is because of everything that we just talked about, right? Like, how many t how, how many times are you just going to be okay with the cops raiding you all the time? How many marches can you really do? How many protests can you really go to? And, you know, even in those protests, they're coming in and attacking you. How many times can they... And this applies to all protests, is... After you've been tear gassed, water cannon, rubber bulleted, you know, you see the cops knock down an elderly man and watch him bleed out of his ears. How many, how long, how many times can you see that and not retaliate and defend yourself? And, and that defending themselves is what corporate media and your, your corporate politicians, Democrat or Republican, attack and they say oh well you should protest peacefully motherfucker tell your state sponsored goons to be peaceful then because the only the violence only gets escalated when the cops show up why are the cops at the protest anyway especially when it's a protest protesting the cops so i think if we want to shine a light on these forgotten LGBTQ fights, um, and they are forgotten because I don't think we talk about them enough. This was all new information to me. I, I, I kind of knew about um, Stonewall. Uh, but I didn't really know about the extent of the raids and how many little actions and demonstrations had happened. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's great what's happening with pride. I, I, I love, I love seeing the, the parades, the, the, the eccentric vibrant parades. It's, it's fucking great. It's wonderful. Uh, you know, I love seeing the, the people supporting LGBTQ members in their community. Uh, that's fantastic. But I think if we're going to really talk about pride and if we're really going to use pride as a, as a point of change, then we're going to need to include some direct actions, some activism, some education, some amplification within the parades themselves. Um, you know, the article talks about, well, who wants to go to a boring march when you can have a parade? Well, that's great. Let's mix those two things together. Let's make the parade a march. Let's instead of people standing on the sidelines of, of things, let's 
let's encourage people to join in, right? And take to the streets and march to City Hall and picket places like Independence Hall. You know, educate people on what's going on. Now, now that parade has gathered a, an audience for you, you get to a certain point where there's a there's some speakers set up and you have some speakers. Talk about the history of this stuff. Educate people to say, hey, you know, Stonewall wasn't the be all end all of the of, of pride. It, 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 it was a spark for sure. But what led to that spark uh, was all of these other events, the brutalization. And guess what? Guess what? Nobody's apologized to the LGBTQ community, just like nobody's apologized to the indigenous community, the black community, the immigrant community for all the trespasses they've committed against these communities. They just have. So you and, and you know, that's that's the thing is like you can have some acknowledgement, but you, you should at least apologize for what's happened. And then the next step is legislation that prevents that sort of brutalization, uh, which, you know, I think is is we're a little bit long ways away from um, get, getting some restrictions on, on the fucking cops, which we desperately need. Uh, I think there needs to be a little bit more solidarity, right? I, I think because part of the issue, I, and I know this is sort of a, a big issue, a good friend of mine, Jay Jackson, uh, brought, brought this to my attention, and I know that's sort of a flagship issue for him. Um is uh, what's going on in the black trans community because they're the they're the ones that are attacked the most. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're the ones that have to live in poverty the most. They're the ones that end up on the streets a lot faster. You know, they're the ones struggling to get medical attention. Um, so, so that becomes a Black Lives Matter thing. And I, and I addressed that yesterday. The, the, again, the reason why Stonewall became what it was is all the seeds were kind of planted in place and then they all just kind of came together at, at Stonewall. It did become a lot about solidarity. A lot more communities were getting involved. I, I, identity barriers were being uh, shattered and, um, you know, people came together and that's fucking scary. And I know that if, and I know that if this happens with pride, if, if, if this, vision i have of of pride being about direct action education and celebration and activism and solidarity bringing in various different groups together uh they shut it down let's i mean let's be honest right they would fucking shut it down but that doesn't matter who gives a shit they tried to shut down black lives matter that didn't go away anytime and it's not going away anytime soon they tried to shut down the labor movement. That didn't go away any, you know, that didn't go away either. So I, I regardless of whether the corporate institutions allow us to fucking do, have a parade means diddly fucking dicks, especially when the movement gets huge. I talked about we talked about line three yesterday. They expect these movements to fail. But if we don't let them fail, if we show up and there's 10 cops to, you know, 1,500 fucking people that are standing up for LGBTQ rights, what are these people going to do? They're going to resort to violence for a bunch of people, you know, dressed in vibrant colors and wonderful outfits and have made a float. And they go, well, who, what they're hiding in that float? Love, motherfucker. That's what we're hiding in there. We're hiding all the love on that one float. So if they get violent towards that, came over. The perspective has changed again. So it's it's a fine line that they have to dance. But I don't think that that any of that matters. I think we should take the... We should learn the lessons that we've learned. Um, and, uh, and make pride something that can really change minds. Or at least that's my hope. Change minds through solidarity. That's, that I guess is the, uh, the thing. Uh, 
Holly, good to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Independent Left News. Independent Left dot News. I might. I'm going to say ILN because I'm I'm going to fuck that up and then I'm going to feel terrible about myself. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are great. Uh, Polly says uh, Pride is now commodified, which is true. Uh, we talked about rainbow capitalism. I did a whole piece about that, which e even rainbow capitalism in and of itself likes to ignore the history of this shit. They don't talk about the fact that there's still 19th century laws that they abided by, right? Like if you have three pieces of, of clothing on at the same time that doesn't belong to the gender, who gives a fuck? I was, uh, I was watching uh, New Girl. I, I enjoy that show uh, uh, quite a bit. There, there are some issues with the, with the program, but, you know, Everybody makes fun of uh, Nick Miller, who's one of the characters, a little paranoid, uh, you know, weird character. I like Nick. He's he, he's one of my favorite characters on that show. Um, but he wears a, a, a woman's suit and they make fun of him, but he says he feels powerful. And I was like, that's such a great, it's such a great moment where, where you know, they do make fun of him and they try to punch down on him, but it doesn't matter. He's like, I feel really good because I because it fits really well and the, and the buttons look like, and I'm like, yeah, man, if that's your jam, that's your fucking jam. Who cares? Who cares? Why are we putting, you know, gender uh, assignments to clothes? If you feel good wearing a dress and you're a dude, fucking wear that dress, bro. I don't give a shit. But those laws still existed in the 60s. And they they that those laws are from like the, you know, way back in the day, like early 19th century or something. And... <laughs> and they were used for violence and then rainbow capitalism goes yeah i know but we made rainbow colored shoes made by slave labor but rainbow colored you know it's like what the fuck it's ridiculous uh ba -ba 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 -ba. holly says there's the queer liberation march not the parade two years ago it was in central park oh great yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I, that I, we should do more of that. <laughs> like we should bring back the annual reminders, picketing in front of Independence Hall, and mix that with the parade. Like I, I, I think that's that's sometimes I think uh, you know uh, activists kind of get stuck, um, and we need fresh new things to kind of in, get more kids involved. I guess the kids. Uh, but just get, but just get a fresh perspective on on activism and on marching and on protests and things like that. Like. It, yeah, I, I I would love to see more uh, things like the Queer Liberation March. Um, yeah. Ba -ba -ba. Fred over on the Rockfin. Thanks for joining, Fred. Uh, is that a 10-gallon ball cap? It is not. It, uh, I have a small head, and this hat has an adjustable thing on the back, but it's got a b pretty big uh, top uh, area. I don't know. Uh yeah, I, I got a I got a small head, Fred. I got a th this is one of the hats that fits, <laughs> and it's a Rick and Morty hat. So, uh, which I guess that show is back now. So, uh, there's some news for you. Uh, Cynical girl says, "I love the hat." Me too. Take that, Fred. Huh? <laughs> you you ten gallon son of a bitch, you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. 
Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, You can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, It'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.